them are having a conversation with the mayor of that area, asking them, so what do you do when women have to deliver in the middle of the night? They say nothing, we have to do it at our homes. Because our, our health clinics, there's nothing over there. First of all, there's no lights and there's no machines. If there's machines that were given away, there's no lights to make it work. There's no electricity. So electricity is, is connected to economy, to health, to education, you name it. We can't talk about economic development without energy. Do you face any political challenges to implement this new solar technologies? Um, and if yes, how did you work around it? Well, I think what Samba was mentioning, our, our, our partner, we don't care about the politics, but the journalists, it was cut because the journalists asked the question to, you know, you guys doing this work, there's a lot of corruption in Africa, so why don't you do it? How are you dealing with the governments that are giving you a hard time? We said, just telling them, well, the politics and our issues, we're not getting to no politics. We're focusing on the people. But, but, but my role is the political, I'm the political guy in the, in the team. I deal with the government, so I, I know that we really deal with the politics, but we deal it in the way where, you know, it can work for us. The way we deal with it is that when we come to a country, we, we, the first meeting we set up is with the president. You want it or not, already in Brazil, actually we're in your country, we just came there. But the, the, the first thing we do in our African countries, we meet the, the president to introduce the project. Then the president will introduce us to the Minister of Energy, who get the technicalities, the, 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 the policy, how many villages they want to identify, how many lights they need in the country, they have the details, the Minister of Energy. And then the final person who's very important is the Minister of Finance. Because you can talk about the project, but if the money is not there, it's just another project you put on the George. So the Minister of Finance, our question to the Minister of Finance is, okay, now, the Minister of Energy tells us that you need at least $100 million worth of project in the country to electrify, let's say, 500 villages in the country. Just an example, the Guinea Conakry example. Then the Minister of Finance will decide with us to say, okay, in my budget, I, have, I can allocate in five years or three years, in 10 years, the term that we discuss to the loan that we're going to do, because we come with our pay finance. So, the political thing comes with, the, re the, thing, the reason why it's a little easier for us now is that because what we bring into the table to us African leaders. You might know that in Africa, 65% of the population are under 30 years old. It's the, it's the youngest population in the world. And 90% of our African presidents don't have no clue what to do with these young people. They have no agenda for them. Uh, most of them are taking the boats, trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea in Morocco area to go to Spain. Some of them dying. Last year is the, the deadliest year of young immigrants trying to cross. Just like young Spanish from Guatemala and El Salvador and Mexico trying to cross to come here. It's the same thing happening in the border in Morocco. So this, 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 they are looking for solutions for the young people. So we're bringing not only lights, but we're coming in with job creation. That's what you saw in the Solar Academy and the other programs that we're doing for job creation. And that is very difficult for a politician to refuse. So if, if you're helping them to look good, they're not going to refuse. And I think we did very well to think of the branding of the company, to have a car in it, because he's the most popular African alive today. Okay. Him alone has 52 million followers across the world, the world is in Facebook. When we land in Africa, any country, it's very difficult to move because young people like them. And politicians like whoever young people like. It's like President Obama campaigning and going to Hollywood and getting Denzel Washington and Oprah and them, it's the same thing. So kind of, we bring a, a little more than just lights. So because of it, they open the doors for us. So I hope that answers your question about the political piece, but the core of what we do is about the people. We do nothing without politics in the world, not only now. Right? The project is in three phases. The first phase was the first year we focused on the street lights. And the street lights are strictly dealing with the government because they, they pay the public. We come to urban areas, then we go to far rural areas, 
where the public, where the prefet, the sous prefet, the governors, they need the lights on the streets, they need it in the mosque, in the synagogue, in the churches, um, public areas, in the markets. That the government pays for it. That's the first phase. The second one is the mini grids. We saw that in many places in the continent, they don't have the grid doesn't go there. If you go out of Dakar, the capital of my home country, you drive a little far out of Dakar, like an hour, maybe just 45 minutes. It's a village we age fight over there called Chombo. Nothing, no grid. So what we, what is where we come in? In those grid areas, we come and put mini grids. The mini grids you can have up to 100 families that can connect to. It's all purely solar. Uh, so that's the second phase. The, the third phase is the home systems. You can get a light, a small little refrigerator, TV, charge your cell phones. Uh, it depends how many, uh, how much capacity that you, you need. Then we put the, the material up top on the roof. And it's a payment plan that you, you do. That one is with customer base, uh, with scratch card. And in the end of the month, or the end of the two weeks, so however the payment you want it, then you pay it when it's out, when you get back the card and scratch it. And there is a certain time, it depends what you got from nine months to 12 months to 15 months, then you own the material. So those are the three phases that we have. First, again, is uh, the street lights, the mini grades, and the home systems. We, we, we definitely want to do something in the country. But we're running into a lot of problems with that. The first one is because we talked about it a little earlier. China killed the market of solar. Remember a few years ago, the United States put double on the taxes on solar here, so you cannot bring it here. Because of that, China already produced a lot of solar for the US, for the panels. <coughs> because the taxes were so high, they revert everything to Africa. It's a blessing for us. And the Chinese government was smart to, how they kill the market, they said, okay, they give the money to the companies that are making it so they can make the price cheap to send it to Africa. So we visited more than 16 companies that are doing that in China, and they're all funded by the government. So nobody can compete with the Chinese when it comes to the price. It's cheaper. And believe it or not, the technology now is very good. They, they, they take the technology from Germany and building it. We, we've seen it. We've been there negotiating with them. And there's nobody can compete. Americans can't. The Germans can't. Because the price, at the end of the day, is what it is about. So if we go to Africa, we say we're going to build a, a factory and competing with the Chinese, we're really starting to fail. Why, why go to create it if we can buy it, and now it gives us an opportunity to do something, maybe when you're talking about assemblage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To be able to put the parts together. That we're building, we're working to build the next stage of it. But the first key thing for us was the transfer of knowledge first. Because we can get, get all these lights to come into Africa. But the first problem we're into is just to be able to put them up so people can use it. We don't have nobody who can do it. <coughs> People are not trained for it. They are not trained to put the lights up or even to, make, to do the maintenance. During our negotiations in China, it's a very long days and we just conversating back and forth. Then our partner said to us, each country we need minimum 200 workers and we bring for us to be able to put the money on the table. So, when he come to that point, I asked Khan and Sam, we need to go out, we need to have a conversation among us. My idea was, bro, we can't do it. Because the problem that we have in Africa today is job creation. Young people are not working. Our <coughs> universities, let's give you the example of Senegal, Shahantibu University, 80,000 students. Most of them, when they graduate, they all got degrees on history, philosophy, etc., law. We are not training nobody, and they have no jobs. What can we do to make sure here that the jobs, they only send us two people? So this is what we put to the table. We need two people, the, each country, the director and the quality control manager. And this director will help us to train the young people, the trainers, 
few of them, we send them to China, they train them, then we come, they can train the young people in every country, then we hire our own people to do the work. It was a big battle, but in the end we won. Because of that, in two years we have 5,200 young people working around the country. Um, we thought it was good, but the project got bigger than what we expected. Um, so we start sending uh, young engineers to universities. We paid a lot of money for scholarships, up to a million dollars a year, 500 to a million. Uh, the first uh, group are graduating next year out of University of of Marrakesh. Then we saw, now we got these engineers will be coming out, but the scale, we need more people from South, from Senegal all the way to Kenya to do the slides that we're putting in. So we opened up the Solar Academy in Mali, that's here to just show. And the first class just graduated last, in, two weeks ago. So then the Solar Academy is now in West Africa. Um, we both, Karen and I, are flying to the Congo in a <coughs> few days to negotiate our next school that we're opening. It's going to be in Central Africa, in Congo. Then we have one planning next year in Southern Africa. So each region in East Africa will have an academy there that can train the young people help us to put this light silver around the country. We come to the government, we negotiate with them how much they want to put in, how many, I talked about at the beginning, how many lights do they want to, how many bridges they want to do. Let's say the loan is, they want a hundred million dollars worth of work. And then we come in with the hundred million dollars up front with the material that's coming from the project. When they come in, we put also Solectra International, our company, put the workforce in place that we train to do the work. When the government guaranteed a loan, the interests are very, very little. It's not a lot compared to none of our companies. Yes. That's why every tender that we participated in one. And on top of that is that the government will pay three, sometimes four, we negotiate with the Minister of Finance five maximum years of repayment. Some governments will say, in my budget, I have allocated 25 million a year on solar energy already. Most of them do. The problem they have is that they can't find no company that come in and do the pre-financing. A lot of people talk about it, but when they come about putting the money on the table, people want to go and look for the money. And these, these governments, they need immediate answers to these problems. So, Let's say every month, every year, they, they pay 25 million, so for, for four years you have 100 million back with the interest. And then that's where us and our partners make our cuts, our money. This is what we do the first time we come to a country. Each country we come in to, to, to do our own first investment. When we meet the president, we tell the president, Mr. Khan, what you're talking about. Give us five to ten villages that you want to be electrified. You choose where it is in the country. We do it in our own money. We're all we're asking you is that when we bring the material, you need to get it out of the port. We, put our, we bring our young people, we fly some from Senegal, from Mali, whatever goes to the country. And we go in that village, we take 100 families, we put lights every house. And we take the whole village, put 15 to 20, 30, it depends where the, 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 the street lights. And when that's done, this is probably what you saw in the media, we come in, we ask one of the government representatives, sometimes the president, or sometimes the minister of finance or energy, or the prime minister, in the case of the name of Guinea. And we go with the elected officials to see, to inaugurate the village. The idea is when we do that, the villages around now got some problems. I'll share with you an anecdote. We were in, in, in Libreville, right outside of Libreville, an hour away from uh, Gabon, uh, Libreville, Gabon. And we asked the Minister of Finance, because we met Ali Bongo a few months prior, and he asked us to do that area. We went to the village, a couple more. In this particular village we went, it's very hard to go in, and it's, it's a very poor area. We're coming back, it's like 9 p.m. The Minister of Finance is, is in the car with me in time, and he has to go back to to town to catch the flight to go to Paris. Like, we really had like an hour and a half. We come in the middle of nowhere and there's bricks to block the roads. The 
chauffeur stops, the whole convoy comes out. Next thing you know, the whole village come out with sticks, with, with knives, all kinds of stuff. Literally ready to fight us. So we came out, Samba and I, and some of our young people, Akon and Mrs. stayed in. We asked what's going on, they start screaming. Yeah, this is, this is Ali Bongo, it's the government, guys. You're going to skip us here and go give the village like next to the other ones, like we are not governors. What do we do wrong to you? They're screaming <laughs> things and cussing you up. Nobody's going to pass you. You're doing some light. Like, well, that's really some serious problems. We want to go home. But we are not Ali Bongo. We just came to do some work here. And they ask where we're from. We say, well, we're Akon, Latin Africa. They say, Akon? Where is Akon? We say, Akon is in the car. They say, no, 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 there is no Akon here. So we're not going to let nothing go. So we ask Khan to come out. Khan comes out and they all now screaming. They say, well, we want to take a photo with him. <laughs> they don't even have a camera to take a photo with him. But in the end, the story is that it, it, it was a good experience for the Minister of Finance couldn't come out because if he came out, it would have been some serious problems. They didn't know he was in there. Then from there, that's when the president decided that we're going to do some work with him. Because doing, giving them one to ten villages give them pressure also with the other government. And that's the strategy that they kind of was talking about. They don't know when we're giving them free, we want them to know that the other guy going to be calling the mayor and the president's office like, why this one get like we don't have to? And we give that for free, but the rest is not free. The government has to pay for it. So that's, that's another thing we do also on the business model. We open the doors on partnership with everyone. Chinese is just, is a, they just one of our partners. We got partners in the UK, Azuri, that, that, that we partnered in the beginning with the home system. Now we have our own with Huawei, but before it was Azuri. We're still partners. Um, then we also partnered with, I just talked about uh, Columbia University. That's helping us with now the mini grids. And we're partnering now with a German company very recently who actually is helping us with the solar academy and the training. Everything in the system in the training that is there. Storage, our partner is actually looking for even more people on the storage side. Because it's a serious issue on the storage side. So we, we built a Econatic Africa through partnership. Even in the United States, all the energy, you have different energy solutions, right? You have aerodynamic, you have wind, you have solar, you have the grid. In Africa, as I said in the beginning, it's an opportunity to try new things. If the solar can get us there in certain percentage, even if it's 20% of the, the need, let's do it. But at least we're going to try. You know, I was talking about earlier <coughs> how with the mobile industry, the booming it did in Africa, it didn't happen anywhere else. You know, 90% of African homes never had a telephone at home. My house never had a telephone. We skipped it. You know, today, Af there's more cell phones in, in Africa than anywhere. Even the African guy who lives in the villages far, they don't have no light, have at least two cell phones. They will walk three miles to get charged. But they got two or three. They do mobile banking with that. With my friends in Kenya, which is now a model actually to the world. It's being copied, it's being sold everywhere, even in India. So that same thing that happened with the mobile industry is going to happen with solar. And I know it's going to be happening with solar in Africa. Because today that the, the need is there. And we have other avenues though for energy. There's huge projects in going on in the continent now into the, they, they're talking about. We are all part of this group that's called um, Africa Leaders, Energy Leaders Group. We are a part of, we are the, one of the funding partners, Dangote is one of us. Our friend and brother, Tony Edelman, is a part of it. The African Development Bank is a part of it. Actually, our office is, the office is bent to the African Development Bank. We all put our money on the table in Abidjan a year and a half ago. And we are building something to address the general need of Africa's energy. Anybody here uh, familiar with the Zinga project in Congo? That's been going on for years. It's being now 
talked about to, be, to come back to use Congo's river to bring energy to that area. There is also another huge project started by a Frenchman who is called Jean-Louis Borloo. Some of you might have heard about it. It's called Energy for Africa. For his idea, I just had a meeting with him in Paris. His idea is to, to do a Marshall Plan like the U.S. did for Europe, for Africa. Some are skeptical about the idea, but I think it's a great project. It needs a lot of funding in my work, but it's going to take a long time. In the, mid, in the meantime, we, we on the ground. We, we ain't waiting for all that stuff to happen. We're waiting for them to come catch up so we all can move. But we, we welcome every opportunity to bring the energy to the continent. And especially for you who are interested in, in solar, interested in doing business, and sustainability, I would invite you to, to look into doing something in the country. The, the opportunities there in business is, is unbelievable. Unbelievable. You will never imagine until you get there. There's so much to do. I mean, imagine 600 million people. That one, that two, 600 million people in Africa. Latin America, you get another million. In Asia, the same thing. They, have no, they don't have a choice. So that person is not, it doesn't mean that we have to just give them garbage. But you should see, that's what Khan was saying, you cannot explain the faces we get. We cry. This changed our lives, man. This is the kind of business I want to die doing. Because <laughs> you, 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 you see the lives of people automatically in a nutshell change. We have old people just crying, telling us, I've never thought in my life one day that I can see lights in my house, in my community. Today, my children can grow this. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for you. Yeah. Yeah. Very recently, we were in Bamako, right out of Bamako, in December, we were inaugurating the Solar Academy. And we went to this area where there's mountains there. And population that live there, they walk three miles, the women only can do it. They send the women to go get water. When we went prior, 10 months prior, we were heartbroken to see that. The generations to generations to generations, we never water. Forget light, water. So they don't have no light. But water is the main thing in those colonies. So we said, okay, when we go back to China, we talk to our partners and we need some solar pumps to make sure that we bring them there. And we did. If you want to see this on our website, those videos, it was, it was hard, it was touching bro. We went there, all the women around, and you see on our website, we opening the water for the first time in this neighborhood, in their own generation. When the water ran, people crying everywhere. This, you don't think about it. Going, I just went to the bathroom, just washed my hands. I don't even think about this water, it's priceless. I don't know. Because I'm used to it, right? So I'm telling you to tell you that, you know, People don't have a choice. We, we, we are in, a, in an emergency today, now, to find solutions for them. And we have 362 days in Africa, out of the 365 days in Sub-Saharan Africa, of sun. We would never run out of it. Never. It's sunny every day. And it's underutilized. I mean, the West couldn't, even if you try, you can't. Uh, what else? <coughs> Come here. We have that. If we use it, it can be an example that you know out of nothing, we can really create something that's sustainable for us at last. This is what I'm talking about. And, and the doors are open for everyone to do business in Africa, in that, in that area. If you have another idea that can bring a better light, then you go solve it. Welcome, bro. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm open for business. I give my business card. We can create something else like Econ Lighting Africa. Right? So I'm happy to be here and, and, and have a conversation with all of you. And I, I hope that you will take the time to, you know what I'm saying, when you, what you're learning here, the theory, that you'll be able to practice it in different parts of the world, wherever your journey will take you. Wherever you want to end up, you are already on the right track on sustainability, right? 
So that means the work you're going to do somehow going to affect the lives of the people. If, if, if the work we do somehow doesn't add into making life better for others, I question what we're here for. You know, there's there's many who are here and gone. Nobody remember they, were, they passed on. But the, there, there are those who came and did the, the meaningful work. And they understood that it was not only about making money. They understood that there was a legacy to leave behind for the generations to come. Each one of us has something very special, that light that God has given you, whatever you want to call them, Jesus, God, whatever, something, a light, energy, that you only have. And if you have the the courage to acknowledge that specialty in you. And you develop it and you work at it and then you, you fight to make sure it's out there. That thing can change the world. And you will amaze the world and they will think you're a genius and you are not. You just went a little farther in you than anyone else. So my message is, what are you giving to the world? Because those who remember like Mandela, Dr. King, President Kennedy. We didn't remember them because the houses they built, the many degrees they had, the, the kind of families they come from, and the privilege and all that. We remember them because of the contribution we did for the lives of others for generations to come. And the question that I ask myself and I will share with you today is what Dr. King said. The most pressing question is what are you doing for others? Go out there and make somebody feel like they are not alone in this world. And even through your business, you can change lives. Finally, it's through giving that we become. It's through giving that I found a online in Africa. It's through giving my time and energy to young people across the world. It's through giving my time to come here, my own money and time, that hopefully something will be born out of this first time. And I'm just hoping that somebody out here We'll go out there and just make somebody alone again feel like they're done it alone in this world. Because a lot of people feel like they're not good, they are by themselves. In America and elsewhere. So God bless you. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate it.